Okay, good evening. So I just mentioned, you may have heard today, it was uh, for the first time in Israel, one of the uh, lab-grown meat companies has now got regulatory approval from the Ministry of Health, which means that soon we're going to start seeing lab-grown meats in the shops. Maybe not so soon. Still doesn't mean it's kosher. Or not. That's, a, that's a separate issue, but it's, uh, it's coming in any event. So uh, yesterday we were talking about dates. You mentioned the Ramban, who learns out from here that aside from the Pshat of this Pasuk, that it's talking about Kiddush HaChodesh, Ramban learns, yeah, there's a mitzvah also to count the months beginning from Nisan. We asked, how can it be if that's the case? How can we use secular dates? How can we have other forms of calendar of counting the months? So we explained yesterday, there are those other Rishonim who don't agree with the Ramban, seemingly most of them. It could be that if we're dealing with just, uh, you know, counting Rosh Chodesh Nisan as the first of the months in terms of importance, in terms of significance, to remember in terms of Yetziat Mitzrayim. But when you use the date for convenience, that may be, uh, that may be acceptable. So another piece, very interesting, Rabbi Shavais brings in his Sefer, that takes us back to the, the Rashbam, and Chumash says the following. We know there's a machloket as to when the world was created. The Gemara, Gemara and Rosh Hashanah between Rabbi Eliezer and Rabbi Yoshua. <coughs> like earlier this year when we had, uh, we had uh, Yom Yun before uh, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, so Rabbi Ron Peretz was here. He spoke about this, you may remember. Rabbi Ron Peretz was... Uh, his son was uh, was taken hostage. He's being held in Gaza. Bezrat Hashem. He should have a refuah He should come home soon, speedily, safely. We're all praying for him, amongst all the other hostages. But in any event, so there's a machloket when the world was created. Was it in Nisan or was it in Tishrei? So based on the Rashbam, Moshe Weiss makes a deal for the following. He says, according to Rabbi Eliezer, who says the world was sorry, according to Rabbi Yoshua, who says the world was created in Nisan. So Nisan is the beginning of the year. That's when the world started. That's when the year begins anyway. Saying that we count from Nisan is no more than really just a statement of fact. That's when it begins. That's when the world was. So obviously you'd start counting from Nisan. That's the beginning. But if you go by Rabbi Eliezer, who says that the world was in fact created in Tishrei, so it would make sense to start counting from Tishrei, from the beginning. That's why the Gemara and Rosh Hashanah as well says, comes to counting years, comes to counting years for kings, Umut HaOlam count from Tishrei, and we count for Jewish kings, we count from Nisan. So there, the instruction becomes an obligation, count from Nisan, don't count from Tishrei like everybody else does, but you have to count from Nisan, and that's Rosh Chodashim, and that becomes more of an instruction, more of an obligation as such, if we hold like Rabbi Eliezer. However, he says we know most of the time, we don't paskan like Rabbi Eliezer, we probably paskan like Rabbi Yeshua, whatever that means that the world was created in Nisan and not in Tishrei. And therefore, it's more just a statement. It's not necessarily a, a, an instruction, an obligation as such. And that could be another resolution as to how it is that we're able to, uh, to count the months in other ways, alongside the counting from, uh, from Nisan. Another interesting uh, point that comes up, talking about the moon and talking about is uh, the idea of Kiddush Levana. Kiddush Levana, the Gemara says every month, you see the moon as it is uh, uh, being renewed, as it is uh, waxing once again. So we have a special bracha of Kiddush Levana that we say. It says everybody goes out and says, uh, it says uh, this bracha, it says, it's Ke'ilu Makabel Pnei Shechina, as if we are receiving the face of the Divine Presence. Uh, so one of the discussions, first of all, that the Gemara says, Ara'el Levana Bechidusha. Why is it called Kiddush Levana? So there are those who say it's not meant to be Kiddush Levana, but it's actually Chidush Levana. Somewhere along, somewhere along the way, the uh, Kuf got switched with the Chet, and so we'd say, well, the Chet got switched with the Kuf, so instead of saying Chidush Levana, Kiddush Levana, there are those who call it Berkata Levana, but nonetheless, we do find in many of the Rishonim, Achronim call it uh, Kiddush Levana as well. So the question over here is this. That we have the special bracha of seeing the moon at the beginning of the month, seeing it at the first half of every month, which we can say. Is it, is this just like any of the other birkot There are many birkot many brachot we have <laughs> upon seeing different natural events, seeing special uh, phenomena. Um, you see a person sees a rainbow, you see thunder and lightning, well, you don't see thunder, but you see lightning, you hear thunder, you see uh, mountains and rivers and seas and oceans, spectacular uh, natural uh, phenomena. So there is a bracha. There's not that we have an obligation to go out 
and find, uh, you know, there's a thunderstorm out there. You have to go and see the lightning in order to uh, say the bracha. You have to go and see, oh, if you happen to see it, so there's a bracha that you say. So it could be, maybe, that um, the same same idea, that once a month, the beginning of the month, if you see the moon, then you go and you could say the bracha. Or do we say that there is something more here? There's maybe something a little bit different. From the language of Chazal as well, they compare those two, Ke'ilu Mekabel Pnei Shechina, Sounds to me like there's something different, maybe a little bit more of an obligation. Um, maybe it's not exactly the same as the other, as the other Bikota Re'iya. The Rambam, when he writes the writes about Kiddush Levan, he writes about it in Hichot Brachot, together with other Bikota Re'iya, together with the Bracha of seeing the sea, of seeing uh, mountains, of seeing uh, lightning, etc. So that would seem to indicate that it's just another Bikot Re'iya. You see the moon, okay, you see it, you can say the Bracha. Do you have to go out of your way? Do you have to search for it? Do you have to clap on the bimmer at the end of Marav and say, Kiddush Levana, everybody go outside? So from where the Rambam writes that, you might say no. On the other hand, we don't treat, we don't seem to treat Kiddush Levana as any other big We seem to treat it as more of an obligation, more of something, uh, something that we have to do. So we find in the Poskim a very interesting tshuva. The Nodabi Yehuda, quite a well-known uh, tshuva, talks about the following case. Where, um, you know, especially in Europe, when during the, in the wind, winter, summer, whatever, when it's raining all the time and there's clouds, and it can sometimes be a little bit tricky to be able to see the moon and to get to say Kiddush Levana. So it happened that it was on Purim night. And uh, on this occasion, that, right, that was, it was the last time that one could say Kiddush Levana. Until that point, there had not been an opportunity. And they're reading Megillat Esther halfway through the Megillah or three quarters of the way, whatever it is. And somebody comes in and says, the moon's their answer. So do you have to go? Do you have to stop in the middle of Megillah? Go out, say Kirush Levana, and then come back and have to start again and complete uh, re reading the Megillah. Or do we say, no, what? this is the question that the Nodab Yudah was asked. You're in the middle, you're engaged in another mitzvah now. Maybe you don't even have the obligation right now because right now you aren't looking at the moon. If we say Birkat Re'iyah means that it's the Re'iyah, that it's what you see that obligates you in performing the Bracha. So you don't see it now. Right now, you're performing another mitzvah. Why do you have to go out and leave? So the uh, Nodabi Yudha Paskan, in this case, there's a long tshuva, goes into many details. But his conclusion there is that they should stop. They should go out and they should say, uh, they should say, uh, whatever you want to call it. And then they can come back and, uh, and then they can come back and say, uh, finish reading them again. So that seems to indicate that this is not just like the other uh, but this is something more. This is something of a different, maybe more of a, more of an obligation as such. There are many others who disagreed with them, from Shlomo Kluger and others, and write that they say no. At that point, one is not obligated to go out. So that might indicate that it's just like another uh, like another Mikhat uh, as well. Truth is, there are a few different uh, few different proofs where you look at not just our custom, but you look in the halakha regarding Kiddush HaLevana, that seems to imply that, again, this is not the same. This is not just an ordinary bracha uh, we have on seeing something, but there is something different, maybe more of an obligation. One of them is, as I mentioned, the Rambam writes this in Yilchot Brachot, the Tur, Shulchan Aruch, does not. It's in a different section related to Rosh Chodesh. That is where we talk about Kiddush Levana. Magen Abraham brings a uh, discussion. He says that a suma, meaning a person who is blind, somebody who can't see, he says he's still obligated in Rikat Levana. Okay, others disagree. And there's a there's machloket about that. But clearly, if you're going to say that somebody who can't see would still have to say the bracha, it's got something to do with uh, uh, something more, more than just uh, seeing it. Another point which comes up is that the other Brikot Re'iyah, right, generally speaking, a person sees natural phenomena. So what happens if a person lives next to the sea? Right? Clearly, you're not going to say the bracha every day for the rest of your life. So it's only if we say once in 30 days, a person hasn't seen that phenomena for 30 days, the first time you see it, you say it again. What happens if you see it and you don't say the bracha and then you keep seeing it the next day, the next day, but you didn't say, so you missed. So there's a discussion as well in the Biyar Lacha, now the Poskim, if a person missed the bracha on the first yeah, on the first occasion of seeing this phenomenon, you did not say the bracha. So afterwards, you don't say the bracha either. At least there's a discussion. But by Bikata Levana, by Kirush Levana, we've never found that somebody says, okay, you've seen the moon already that month, you can't say uh, Kirush Levana. We don't say that. In fact, we wouldn't say that you have to wait 30 days in between, right? If you if one month we said uh, Kirush Levana on Chet, does that mean you have to wait till Chet the next month? No. 
we don't uh, don't make that distinction. And that also seems to indicate that uh, this is um, and this is different in nature to the other to the other brachot of Riyah. A fascinating question that came up in our modern age is what happens when man landed on the moon the first time. So what happens in terms of our nusach, in terms of our tefillah? What if, and this could be a question, what if somebody's on the moon? Can you say, uh, interesting uh, discussion. We'll see what the post can have to say about that. About that maybe tomorrow.